Hi there YouTube, welcome to uh, another Black Powder Armies update. Um, I've got three units uh, to show you guys today. Uh, first of which is uh, the last of my uh, British units. Um, I'll just bring them into to shot here. Um, and these guys, uh, like I say, are my last British unit from the Waterloo starter box set. So I've actually uh, completely finished all my British side of that box set now. Um, and one extra unit of Hanoverians, which which is uh, um, which I'm really happy about actually. Um, and of course that means that the other two units I've done are the start of my French. Uh, which is something that again, it's, um, you know, I've been putting them off for so long. Um, it's, it's good to get started and, and it means that I'm that much step closer to actually being able to have my first game, um, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, so let's uh, uh, zoom in on these guys a little bit. Uh, these guys are the uh, 30th Regiment, um, chosen uh, because of their link to my first British unit, which was the, uh, the 33rd uh, Foot. Um, and they actually uh, they actually end up coming from the same uh, uh, division um, historically, which is which is really cool because uh, I was kind of uh, a little uh, worried about trying to get historic accuracy uh, into my uh, you know my plans of having just such a small um, set of of uh, you know like I'm basically going to end up with sort of like two uh, brigades. Um, and I was kind of uh, worried how to try and make those two brigades somewhat historical uh, because they are so small. But um, at least for my British, um, you know, I've got some sort of link to a historically accurate uh, brigade. Um, and uh, I, I kind of plan to have four uh, infantry units uh, in total um, in my um, fully finished uh, army. And I've actually picked up uh, at the same time as I got the uh, 30th uh, flags, uh, the flags for um, the 73rd foot and the 69th, which again are all in the same division. So, that's, so that kind of makes me uh, quite chuffed that, I, that I've actually managed to link all my units. So I'll quickly uh, show you through these guys. Um, of course they're just a bog standard British infantry unit, which of course you all kind of know uh, what they look like really. but. Um, I did kind of I slightly change the colour of the grey that I used on these guys' uh, trousers and, and uh, the officer's long jacket this time. Um, I don't think it makes too much difference, but I, it just looked uh, a little bit better to me when I first put, put it onto the uh, the miniature. But once it's like shaded up and stuff, it kind of looks more or less the same as, as uh, the original grey that I used, so it doesn't really make too much difference. Um, I think uh, you know. Other than that, I think they generally came out more or less the same as as um, as the last British unit I did, really. But I'm pretty chuffed with them, and, and of course because they are my last uh, unit of British, I'm happy to have to finish them so far. Um, and of course my plans are to uh, now work on my French. Um, I've got uh, I finished um, two units of those. Um, a the unit of Chasseur de Cheval and one infantry unit and that of course leaves me with two infantry units left to finish uh, the French side of the starter set um, and of course that includes an extra battalion of, of infantry uh, like my British um, so here we have the uh, the rear uh, unit of troops and they uh, have actually got I've actually utilised the uh, the engineer figure this time. I think he's a really cool looking figure. So that's the the rear company. And the I'll, I'll do all the rear companies first. Because they are kind of like box standard really. So here we have the next. And of course the way that I do uh, my plastics are that I kind of uh, it's all like completely randomised, so um, the bodies, the heads, uh, and the backpacks are all uh, random, randomly uh, picked. To, and of course, um, you know, occasionally you get 
the same miniature um, pose on the same stand, but of course they generally have different backpacks and different heads. So that's the all the uh, all the second rear unit and the final rear unit. Got one of the bandaged guys there. Uh, the other thing that I did slightly different this time was I used a slightly different colour for the uh, the water bottle uh, band. Um, I, I, I think I was using a, a, a brown, um, but I actually used like a red leather this time, um, and, and sort of mixed in with with a few sort of whites. Um, but I think the the red leather looks really cool. Um, I really do uh, uh, quite like that colour. So that's the rear three units. Uh, next up, we'll do the uh, the drummer stand. <coughs> and we've got uh, the drummer and three infantry, of course. The drummer came out really cool. Uh, I actually noticed that I um, somehow. Uh, between my first British unit and this, um, that's my cat's hairs there. Hold on. There we go, sorry about that. I hate uh, hairs appearing on miniatures. Um, I actually I, I noticed um, when I uh, put these guys up next to my uh, other British unit that I'd actually um, mixed the drummers up somehow. Um, so if I go actually bring that drummer unit across. So this is the drummer unit from my, my first unit of, uh, of Brits. You can see this, it's, it's got a, a different pose and a different uh, jacket. So I obviously mix them up between the Hanoverians and the, uh, and the uh, Allied uh, or British uh, command packs. So it's quite cool to have uh, the alternate posed uh, drummer there. But you can see, I, th I think this drummer came out really cool actually. Uh, this striking yellow uh, um, tunic with the white lace detail. And that's the drummer stand. The drums, uh, you know. Nice and sort of simple design this time, not quite as elaborate as some of my others, but um, you know, quite nice striking colours. And finally, we'll go for the command stand, my favourite stand, of course. Um, one of the big uh, draws in Napoleonic uh, stuff for me is always the sort of the colour parties. I always think they, they look, I, I personally think they're like perhaps one of the best uh, sort of command group looking command groups you can get in all of wargaming um, I don't think there's anything more sort of uh, striking than uh, than a really nice uh, Napoleonic command group with with their banners colors so we've got the plastic infantry guy on the uh, end there the two officers with the flags and the colonel the colonel of course is the alternate sculptors as well the, uh, the Hanoverian colonel comes in the Hanoverian command pack um, and I gave him a shakeode head rather than uh, the bicorn, uh, or the the yeah I think it's is it a bicorn I think it's a bicorn, the bicorn head that uh, most people normally put on their colonel figures. I think it looks really cool. So that is uh, the 30th regiment, my final British unit for now, um, and uh, I was I'm very happy to finish those guys. Let's just move them out the way, and I'll bring in the first of my French units, which will be the Chasseurs de Cheval. So let me just put this guy back with his battalion. There we go. Okay, so let's just move the camera down a little bit. So these are the Cheval, Chasseurs de Cheval from the... Uh, The Waterloo starter set, and of course, uh, like all units from that starter set, uh, 
they didn't come with command. Um, and you can't buy command either. Um, so I was kind of a little bit stumped of, of, of what to do with these guys. Um, and what I ended up doing was I made my own. Um, so let's just, I'll, I'll start with the command stand here. So you can see that um, I basically converted a normal uh, chasseur figure and uh, converted his le legs to have uh, full uh, boots rather than like the coverall they normally have. Uh, I trimmed off his um, carbine and his um, cartridge box and uh, obviously painted his uh, painted them up in a more sort of a slightly regal a more regal uniform um, given him the gold handled saber and gave him one of the elite company heads so that he's got this nice sort of brassard or it's called um, and for the cavalryman or the standard bearer rather I used a um, a spare saga spear I had and I drilled through his hand and uh, made this sort of like uh, you know a rather uh, poor copy of a French eagle uh, out of plastic putty on top and I think it came out really really quite cool looking in the end it's like yeah I'd rather have a, a slightly misshapen eagle than, than no uh, flag bearer at all and these guys are actually the uh, the 12th uh, Chasseurs de Cheval. Um, again, I sort of hunted down um, a, a company of uh, Chasseurs that are linked to, um, so, or somewhat linked to, uh, the uh, regiments of infantry that I chose. Um, so, yeah, I'll also, the, let me, yeah, just uh, being on the horses. Uh, obviously, for, for because as an officer, a command stand decided to go a little bit more uh, um, upper class on the horses for these guys. Uh, so I gave the officer a nice grey horse and the uh, standard Zona Palomino. I think that these uh, horses come out really cool. I, I do actually really like these warlord horses. I think they're uh, the proportions of them are great, um, and um, they paint really well. So that is the command stand on my chasseurs de cheval. And I'll just kind of run you through quickly the normal guys, because obviously all these guys are more or less the same. But you can see that uh, the, the sort of the basic uniform of these guys is they've got sort of crimson uh, coloured cuffs and these sort of skirts of their, um, their saddlebags. And uh, you can see that I used um, slightly different uh, colours of brown for the horses, I think one of these is a dark brown and one of these is a normal brown. They kind of look pretty pretty similar to the truth. It's only really the, the highlighting that's different. Um, but I, I, I was really chuffed with the way my horses came out this time because it's been about over a year since I painted a horse last. And uh, I really did enjoy uh, painting them uh, this time around. I was, I was, I've always kind of been a little bit scared of painting horses, but um, I, I really enjoyed painting them and, and they all turned out really well, uh, in my opinion. So that's one unit. Let's go for this this uh, alternate unit with the, uh, this, these guys have got a white horse in, uh, which I think came out really cool. And a, I think that's a chestnut horse on the, uh, the opposite side. And you can see uh, the chasseurs there. Um, it took me a little bit of time to come up with a colour for these guys. Um, I initially was going to use a colour called Deep Green, um, but I, I thought it was like a little bit too light. So I ended up using um, a colour called um, Military Green mixed in with a little bit of uh, uh, that same Deep Green. And I think the colour that, that came out uh, is um, as close as I can get it to what I've seen in, in pictures and on the back of the wall or box and stuff like that. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Overall. So that's those two. And... 
got another two, uh, what are these, a dark brown and a brown I believe for these horses. And you see that guy's got an uncovered shako there. And here's a horse that's got um, some uh, nose marking. Again, a, a kind of uh, there's a lot more sort of brownie horses than than other colours in this unit. Um, um, the way that I sort of painted them was um, I did um, I started off with two um, two stands uh, of horses. Uh, and I basically painted all the horses to about maybe to the point where they're maybe I don't know maybe ninety percent done, um, and uh, sort of finished off their saddles, and then I stuck the the uh, then I sort of started painting the uh, the riders, and when the riders were about maybe ninety percent done, I stuck them on t onto the horses, and then uh, finished them all off uh, at the same time. Um, both rider and, and horse, because there, there wasn't really too much stuff to do with the horse, just like picking off, picking out the uh, the bridle wear and stuff. Um, and uh, the riders, um, literally just adding a bit of highlighting to their faces, and um, just doing sort of a general tidy up, uh, which is of course a lot easier to do when you've got a, a big stand to and a nice mount for the for the figure. Um, so that's uh, the second to last uh, chasseur unit, and then the final um, with another horse with some uh, some markings on his nose. Um, and again, we've got another two uh, slightly different variations of horse. I think there's a, a again a sort of a brown and a chestnut. Um, another guy with a uncovered shake over. And that's the Chasseurs de Cheval. Another cat hair. Okay, that's the uh, second unit down, one more unit to go. Um, and now uh, the my first French unit. Let's bring them in. Okay, there they are, and uh, these guys are the 34th line, I think. Yep, 34th line. I'll start, we'll start with the command group. Uh, very pleased how uh, these guys came out, especially the uh, the uh, the old uh, banner guy holding the colours. Thought that came out really cool. Again, a GMB flag, um, and you can see the colonel there with his. Uh, Long jacket and holding a pistol with his uh, his gorget around his neck, and then we have the other two officers: the flag, the standard bearer holding the uh, standard or the colours, with his silver hilted sword and his gorget, and then the uh, the lieutenant behind him with. Uh, He's got a, a, a slightly posher sabre with a gold hilt, and he's got the lieutenants. So they both got lieutenant ranks, which is the gold epaulet with the uh, red stripe, and the, the infantryman in the background there. And again, somehow cat hair has gone to my stand. There we go. You can see this uh, this uh, French infantryman is the one with a bandage around his head. So that is my first unit of French. The next unit we have 
the unit with the uh, the sapper on and the drummer. Um, I kind of decided to put the uh, rather than put the sapper onto my grenadier stand, decided to put him in the front ranks with a drummer. Um, obviously, he's wearing a, a sort of a, a long coat, so he's not in his sort of very stunning uniform, but he's still got that nice bearskin hat and, and the uh, epaulets. And the drummer there with his uh, nice plain drum. Of course, again, he's wearing a, a long coat too, so he's not uh, really, uh, didn't have to paint the um, elaborate uh, tunic. And then just two regular infantry in the background, one of them of which has got the classic uh, onions hanging off his backpack. And the second one, uh, the one with the pair of shoes, or spare shoes. So that is the... Uh, drummer, well, this, this, the second part of the, sort of the command sound I suppose. Uh, next up, a sort of plain unit of uh, infantry, got this slight sort of mixture of coloured jackets or long coats. those guys and the final uh, third unit for those guys are the voltiers so here we have some voltiers uh, I decided not to make them skirmishable um, these ones mainly because I'd already stuck them to bases and I couldn't pry them back off um, here is a classic uh, rookie mistake where I stuck a non epauletted figure onto the base and he for some reason uh, He's absolutely rock solid stuck on there and I can't get him off uh, for for hell or high water uh, without snapping his legs off. Um, so I decided to, again using the classic plastic putty, uh, make a extremely rough uh, epaulet, um, which, you know, close in uh, doesn't look particularly amazing, but a distance uh, is good enough to uh, for him to fit into the rest of the unit. Um, only one guy on this particular stand. You'll notice on my grenadier stand there's actually two. Um, so that's the, uh, the whole uh, first side of that French unit. And now the, s the second side, finish those guys off. So we've got another one of these split stands. Now what I sh really should have done if I thought about it was put my voltiers onto uh, these stands and then they could actually be used for sort of kind of, sort of a skirmishy type uh, setup. But um, for some reason I didn't, and uh, so we just got two regular uh, infantrymen guys. And second lot, another one of those bandaged heads there, along with a guy who hasn't got a shaker at all. And funnily enough, he's got an, uh, another row of onions hanging off his backpack. So that is the second or the fourth stand or fifth stand, and then finally the, the uh, grenadiers. And I used the uh, the metal figure from the command pack uh, onto the grenadier stand there, and obviously mixed in three uh, plastic guys. And you can see uh, these two guys at the back are the ones that have got the uh, made-up um, pauldrons or epaulets. Um, I think they still look cool, and I guess the only other error is that this guy's got a, an extra bayonet there. Um, but I think overall, I think they, they came out pretty cool. And that is the end of the uh, this black powder update. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, quite short for me, uh, 14 minutes. Um, and uh, I'm just about to start on my uh, second uh, battalion of French infantry and I've got one more after those and I'll probably show you those when they're both finished. So until next time, catch you later.